Good evening everyone. Today we will be talking about Yoga of Transformation in Integral Yoga of Sri Aurobindo and the Mother. So I would like to make a PowerPoint presentation here to help us out. So what is this transformation? What is this triple transformation in Integral Yoga? So, if we look at the um, explanations Sri Aurobindo gives to the whole evolution of consciousness, so we could see that, especially in the terms of the flame, the divine will inherent in nature, the key is Agni, says Sri Aurobindo the consciousness force and the whole evolution can be described as Agni's journey in four movements <clears throat> involution devolution involution and evolution from the eternal center and within him the fourfold movement is in fact he all is he himself the play himself the player himself the playground he outside time outside space the pure being the pure consciousness the great white silence where all is in a state of involution self-contained still formless so we will come back to this scheme again. Here there are these major movements mentioned by Sri Aurobindo. This is the first involution and devolution, the first cycle. Then again involution and evolution. So as we can see, so evolution is taking place from the Anna level of the matter towards Vijnana, the supermind, stage by stage towards Prana, Manas and Vijnana, covering all the levels, vital, mental, and finally the supramental. <clears throat> so why should Brahman, asks Sri Aurobindo, and this is important for us to understand the very reason of this creation, because we we will not be able to understand its um, transformation. Why should Brahman ask Sri Aurobindo, who is perfect, absolute, infinite, needing nothing, desiring nothing, at all throw out force of consciousness to create in itself these worlds of forms? If then being free to move or remain eternally still, to throw itself into forms or retain the potentiality of form in itself, it indulges its power of movement and formation. It can be only for one reason, for delight. All this world is created for one reason, for delight. As Mother says, for additional ananda and she explains that he had his ananda of self-identity ananda of identity he has already he doesn't need it but he wanted to have the ananda of unity he wanted to be many and to multiply the ananda of his self-identity through uniting with himself in different beings. The Supreme says the mother, the Supreme says the mother decided to exteriorize himself, objectivize himself in order to have the joy of knowing himself in detail, to be able to see himself. You can imagine that the divine, which alone was, could not see himself because he was the only subject who could be. 
Now he wanted to see himself objectively. And for that, he needed multiplicity. So the first thing in himself, which he exteriorized, was the knowledge of the world and the power to create it. This knowledge, consciousness, and force began its work. And in the supreme will, there was a plan. And the first principle of this plan was the expression of both the essential joy and the essential freedom, which seemed to be the most interesting feature of this creation. So these are the fundamental um, rights of every creature uh, in this world, the essential joy and the essential freedom. So how could he, who alone was, become many? It's quite difficult because you alone are. <laughs> so there is a description. The first creation. I'm referring to the Vedas now, but it is based on Sri Aurobindo's vision. And we will come to it, Mother's story. Night, says the Veda, was born out of the shining truth of the supreme power. Not the light was born out of the night, but the night was born out of the light. From the night the waters of the inconscient came into being, and from the waters of the inconscient the time was born, the creator of all that moves. This is from the Rig Vedic hymn. So out of himself he cast a luminous shadow, all these worlds, from the superconscient to the inconscient, gradually denying himself, withdrawing his supreme knowledge from his supreme power, becoming unaware of these worlds, fallen worlds, as himself, losing his awareness in his power. So withdrawing power from knowledge and letting power be. In the enigma of the darkened vasts, in the passion of self-loss of the infinite, a contradiction founds the base of life, the eternal, the divine reality, has faced itself with its own contraries. Being became the void and conscious force nescience and walk of a blind energy and ecstasy took the figure of world pain so you can see being became nothing void and conscious force became nescience and walk of a blind energy so energy is still there but it is blind it cannot know itself, it doesn't know what it is about. And the ecstasy, the bliss, turned into the world pain. In the mother's story, the first supreme emanations, which came from the supreme, this is the picture from Huta, these are the four emanations, it was consciousness in light, that is basically chit, bliss, ananda, Truth, Vijnana, and life, Sat, the uh, immortal life of the being. Being is there. So they fell in this order. First, consciousness in light turned into the darkness. And they fell because they thought, or they felt, rather, that they are the supreme. And they didn't work together. They kind of separated from one another. And this separation created their gradual fall. So consciousness is in light gradually fell into the total darkness, which pulled the bliss, which uh, slowly and gradually turned into the suffering. These are the bottom signs of these um, new qualities. So truth was pulled and slowly turned into total falsehood. Uh, that means misplacement in time and space of things, adharmic things which are not following their own law. And finally, these three emanations, when they fell, they pulled down 
the very being and life turned into death. And so the immortal alone being first could die. So when that happened, and these emanations, first emanations which were supposed to create the world turned into their opposites. So when the first involution took place, says the Veda, this is the fall, <clears throat> the Supreme involved itself in the, uh, got involved in the darkness, in the material inconscient, and the light was turned into darkness, the creation became as if unsteady, says Taitiriya Aranyaka. Shithilam eva, adhruvam eva in Sanskrit. It could not sustain itself. It could not be because it was not aware of itself anymore. So it fell into oblivion. So the Supreme Self had to enter and to support it from within. So when he entered, as the Veda says, himself by himself, atmanatmanam, Abhisam Vivesha, the creation became steady. So when he, the Supreme, entered into his own fallen emanations to support them from within, they became the creation. That which was falling into oblivion was sustained. There are beautiful lines in Savitri, when all was plunged in the negating void, non-being's night could never have been saved if being had not plunged into the dark. So if being had not plunged into the dark, the non-being's night could never have been saved. It wasn't. It would turn into nothing. There would be no, nothing there, being. So the night was saved from the point of view of disappearance and from the point of view of appearance. So it came, it came to, the, to the evolutionary stage. So it started to work for the evolution. It's a very interesting statement of Sri Aurobindo would never have been saved from both sides as night and as the light because night is nothing but light which forgot about the supreme yes the same as suffering is nothing but bliss which disconnected itself from the supreme falsehood is nothing but truth which forgot the supreme and death is nothing but life which disconnected itself from the Supreme. So in the Mother's story, in order to repair the fall of the first emanations, the Supreme Mother Aditi delegated out of herself the force of love, which has plunged into the darkness of the first creation. So in the Vedas it is Agni, as we read that passage, that it is the evolution of Agni, the divine will, the first avatar, who lay down and hid himself within the darkness, the immortal among mortals, as they speak about him in the Vedas. It is because of his presence that everyone and everything is evolving, seeking after the higher knowledge of the Supreme which it lost. So there is within the darkness, there is the divine light, which is causing the darkness move towards light. There is a beautiful picture by Huta from the mother's sketch. This is the first avatar, which lay down at the bottom of the darkness of the inconscient. The mother says when she arrived at this, being for the first time touched it, it opened its eyes and looked at the mother. This is an occult experience. So what is evolution then? As Shubhendo defines it in the synthesis of yoga, a soul of the divine is here slowly awaking 
out of its involution and concealment in the material in conscience. So, slow unfolding, or as Mother describes this, redemption of the fallen emanations. There are beautiful lines in Savitri. He sleeps in the atom and the burning star. He sleeps in man and God and beast and stone because he is there. The inconscient does its work. Because he is there, the world forgets to die. Because the divine is within the inconscient, the world which is not which lost its connection with the Supreme, forgets to die, to disappear. And everything and the inconscient itself is doing its work. Now, these were important uh, preliminary statements about the transformation. We have to see what is to be transformed. So our unregenerated, fallen, unconscious being has to be brought back to its self-awareness and this is the transformation so shubindu speaks about a double process of evolution in the life divine this terrestrial evolutionary working of nature has a double process there is an outward visible process of physical evolution with birth as its machinery. So we have children, children have children, and the evolution continues. For each involved form of body housing its own evolved form, evolved power of consciousness is maintained and kept in continuity by heredity. That's why um, this is what we know as Darwinian evolution. But there is, at the same time, an invisible process of soul evolution with rebirth into ascending grades of form and consciousness as its machinery. At the same time, the soul which is incarnating here is reincarnating and evolving and developing with the help of these reincarnations. So we have a kind of double process. One is the body evolving, the instruments, and the other process parallel is the soul is evolving, which is plunging into the bodies, plunging into the bodies. So when I am born now in this body here, so my grand, 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 grandson somewhere in the future becomes my father. And so this investment which I made of consciousness into the, my genetic code uh, through epigenetics, through, through my experiences and so on, all those corrective measures which genetic code uh, accepted, I will pass forward um, to the future generations through my progeny and also through the influence of other people and interactions with them Consciousness is constantly modifying the genetic code and that modification will meet me in the future as my new body, more um, receptive of the spiritual needs of my soul. So basically, uh, my body is stretched over time over many, many bodies through progeny yes? because I cannot sustain this body in this particular form I am mortal, so to say, it cannot be sustained, but over generations it can be sustained. So I'm stretching my body over generations towards the future where I will receive a better instrument for my needs, for my soul needs. And at the same time, my soul evolves through this, you know, becomes more and more capable of dealing with these instruments of knowledge. So this is a marvelous vision of Sri Aurobindo. Maybe these f things I will skip. This is a, the from the Life Divine. 
um, the, the same explanation in the metaphysical language. So as we know, Brahman is the, or maybe not, maybe I will read. Brahman, says Sri Aurobindo, has projected in itself this luminous shadow of itself and has in the act begun to envisage itself and consider its essentialities in the light of attributes. He who is existence, consciousness, bliss, and that is Brahman, envisages himself as existent, conscious, blissful. And that is how Brahman becomes Atman. Self-aware Brahman is Atman. He becomes existent, conscious, and blissful. From that moment, phenomenal manifestation becomes inevitable. The unqualified chooses to regard himself as qualified. The one becomes the many. So this is how he who alone was became many. And that was his idea in the Vedas also. Bahusyam, may I become many. That was the very beginning of creation. So he, he achieved this through this qualification of his essentialities and attributes, as Shubhana says, in the light of attributes. So here we see this Brahman as existence, consciousness, bliss, supermind, mind, life, matter. It's all Brahman. Yes. Taitiriya would say, Annam Brahmeti Vyajanat. He recognized Brahman as matter. Prano Brahmeti Vyajanat. He recognized Prana as Brahman. And so on. Mind as Brahman, supermind as Brahman, and Ananda as Brahman. And all these beings are being born from the bliss. By bliss they live into the bliss they go. Yeah? All these beings are born from the supermind and so on. So this is the location, the greater location, which is impersonal, spirit. But at the same time, when the Brahman becomes self-aware, he becomes self, Atman. And we speak about him in terms of Purusha, Sat Purusha, the divine self. Chaitanya Purusha, all conscious soul, these are terms by Sri Aurobindo. Ananda Maya Purusha, all blissful soul. Vijnana Maya Purusha, great soul or supramental being. Mano Maya Purusha, mental being, vital being, and physical being. Pranamaya and Tannamaya. We know this from the Indian tradition, this division. And notice Vijnana Maya Purusha connects the higher sat chit ananda with manas prana and anna triple lower worlds so we have two hemispheres higher hemisphere and lower hemisphere and in between this supramental connection of the two that's why the supramental manifestation is the next stage in evolution so now I am moving to the interesting topic of transformation finally. The true being may be realized in one or both of two aspects, the self or Atman and the soul or Antaratman, psychic being, Chaitya Purusha. The difference is that one is felt as universal, the other as individual supporting mind life and body so we have this double soul as it were we have the unborn self over the head you know, that is the self or atman and the other is inborn self in the heart and that is chaitya purusha or psychic being antaratman or antaryamin angushtha matra purusha hridi guhayam the we hear the, about this in the Vedic tradition. So, when one first realizes the Atman, one feels it separate from all things, existing in itself and detached. Nirvanic experience, yes, of 
being totally detached, removed, uninvolved, unborn, never born and never will be born. Disinterestedness comes with this. And if, you know, when one realizes a psychic being, it is not like that. For this brings the sense of union with the divine and dependence upon it and soul consecration to the divine alone and the power to change the nature and discover the true mental, the true vital, the true physical being in oneself. Both realizations are necessary for this yoga, says Sri Aurobindo, for integral yoga. And this is an interesting point where the transformation is to be understood. Transformation is done by the psychic being within, not by the self above. The self above is supporting the psychic being. It is giving it, uh, to it the support and the foundation to act freely because psychic being is nothing but projection of that self. But realization above the fundamental nirvanic realization does not change our world. Going beyond into mukti, moksha, is not changing anything here. And this is the fundamental difference between the older yogas and Sri Aurobindo's integral yoga. So if we um, look at this, what Sri Aurobindo speaks about new creation, we could see, let me summarize these three stages of creation. The first creation was this fall of the first emanations, yes, which turned light into darkness, uh, bliss into suffering, truth into falsehood, and life into death. They created the fundamental... Um, uh, field for manifestation, which laid out the field for its future manifestation, and all the levels of consciousness were unfolded gradually, uh, creating all the worlds in the evolutionary, involutionary order, from light to darkness, from the superconscient to the inconscient, from spirit to matter. So the second creation was the plunge of the supreme into the darkness of material and conscience, bringing the aspect of the self into existence in terms of individual growth and realization. From this point, matter becomes animated, that matter, unconscious matter, and the evolution takes place. So there is life in matter. It can evolve in plants in animals, in human beings. It goes on till the psychic being is fully individualized, that spark within, that projection of the unborn self becomes the being individualized and formed finally. And the instruments of its expression, body, life and mind, are fully developed in this double process of evolution to embody the spirit. And the third creation would be the supramental descent or supramental manifestation of that very supermind which connects us to the transcendental, which reconciles nature with the soul. There is a constant opposition between our inner being, soul, and the nature. Nature is unconscious, soul is conscious. And between them, there are all the grades of consciousness. And this tension will be removed by the supramental descent, the third creation, which enthrones the psychic being that spark within as the Lord of creation and gives it a direct access to the higher realms of being and consciousness, establishing the law of the spirit in the whole nature. So this is the aim of the evolution. So Shubindu speaks about also about different statuses of the divine consciousness and also of statuses of transformation. There are different statuses of the divine consciousness, says Shubindu, individual, 
universal and transcendental. There are also different statuses of transformation. First is the psychic transformation, in which all is in contact with the divine through the individual psychic consciousness, through our spark within the heart. Next is the spiritual transformation, in which all is merged in the divine, in the cosmic consciousness, so the enlarging of the psychic presence in the cosmic sense. And the third is the supramental transformation, in which all becomes supramentalized in the divine Gnostic consciousness, opening to the transcendental bliss, consciousness, and truth. So, few words on each of these. The psychic transformation is a flame born out of the divine and luminous inhabitant of the ignorance grows in it till it is able to turn it towards knowledge. It is a deputy of the unborn self, or Atman, of that unborn self, and so the psychic is the deputy, the projection, in the forms of nature, the individual soul supporting mind, life and body, standing behind them, watching and profiting by their development and experience. So the psychic is also learning from the mind, vital and body how to be here in the world of time and space, though psychic being is the immortal being. So it grows in its capacity and bridges through the gap towards the surface, coming to the front. If it can come forward into the front and govern overtly and entirely, this outer nature of mind, life and body, then these can be cast into soul images of what is true, right and beautiful. And in the end, the whole nature can be turned towards the real aim of life, the supreme victory, the ascent into spiritual existence. You can imagine if the inner immortal being comes to the front, and occupies our mind, vital feelings, emotions, and our body, physical existence, that we, through the psychic, only seek the divine in everything, that what kind of transformation it is, the psychic transformation. The spiritual is the next. So the psychic being, which is already in front, can by spiritual influx, by the greatest spiritual influx, by the universal powers of the divine, which are in the universe, Vishvedevas in the Rig Veda, all the gods, universal godheads, who can come and help psychic to grow and occupy the whole universe. The experiences which Sri Aurobindo had in Alipur jail, when he saw Narayana in every being, in every creature, in everything. This is the, that experience. Can, by spiritual influx, enlarge itself and embrace the, whole, embrace the whole world in an intimate communion or oneness. Or it may become aware of its eternal companion and elect to live forever in his presence, in an imperishable union and oneness as the eternal lover with the eternal beloved, which of all spiritual experiences is the most intense in beauty and rapture. All these are great and splendid achievements of our spiritual self-finding but they are not necessarily the last end and entire consummation. More is possible. So one can live in, constantly in the presence of the universal Godhead, finding him in all the forms, like Mirabai saw Krishna in the cloud, in the tree, in uh, everywhere, 
so this kind of bhakti finding the divine everywhere in the world but more is possible says Sri Aurobindo and this is the final supramental transformation so the psychic still the psychic everything is connected to the psychic the psychic transformation after rising into spiritual change has then to be completed integralized exceeded and uplifted by a supramental transformation in supermind is the integrating light the consummating force the wide entry into the supreme ananda the psychic being uplifted by that light and force can unite itself with the original delight of existence from which it came so a psychic comes from that delight from ananda overcoming the dualities of pain and pleasure in this world delivering from all fear and shrinking the mind life and body it can recast the contacts of existence in the world into terms of the divine ananda and this is the final transformation thank you namaste